Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the School of Radiance podcast, the place to be for both looking and feeling your best. I'm your host, Rachel Varga, a humble human on a mission here to achieve just that with your home care, with your skin care, with slowing aging practices and principles, and also focusing on this radiance part. The, the radiance part is something that we haven't really been hearing much about or enough about. And I just wrapped up a interview with Dr. K and her podcast is Beauty Bites. Uh, she's been on the show. Her episode's coming out soon. Um, I've been on her show. And it's so neat to see practitioners like her and I. Like she's a highly skilled uh, facial plastic surgeon, myself, double board certified aesthetic nurse. And we're noticing that some of the patients and clients that we've served for decades, you know, we're talking thousands of thousands of patients, thousands of procedures on her end and my end. And we're seeing that there are some key elements to actually cultivating a deeper, longer lasting beauty that kind of transcends age. And this is really from living a life that is grounded, that has more peace, where you are in your masculine or feminine energy quite a bit more. Uh, so say, for example, if, if you're a woman sitting in your feminine energy about 80% of the time, and then 20% of the time is that's kind of when you're working and, and accomplishing things. So just to kind of clarify here what that is, because this is so important to having a relaxed nervous system and showing up as your most beautiful self, feminine qualities are going to be in the creative state, in the flow state. Uh, for example, uh, when I'm in nature or doing different activities and I'm fully in my body, whether that's pickleball or the gym, showing up here and a recording a show to be creative and inspire you to kind of flow into more of these qualities. And then when I'm doing emails and other sorts of things that I'm teaching, I'm definitely more in the masculine, but we can't sit there because when women are in more of the masculine, there's going to be more cortisol in my membership. I have a massive lesson specifically on how, what we can do to actually modulate our hormones by our mindset and simple things that we can do throughout the day, which I think is really important because balanced hormones are going to help you feel better. They're going to help you look better because when our cortisol is elevated and we're too much in that sort of masculine, get stuff done, accomplishing things state, the cortisol impacts the amount of collagen and elastin that you have. Also, we can get sort of like that cortisol face. I've definitely experienced this. If you, if you look at past videos, of myself, you will definitely notice that I had more puffiness to my body. I had more puffiness to my face because I was in such a high state of cortisol because I was too much in the masculine. So if you do notice that about yourself, you're like, oh, I wish my features could be a little bit more sort of like chiseled and svelte and, you know, not have so much puffiness under the chin or, you know, my nose looks puffy today. My eyes are puffy today. I just feel like I have this like additional five, 10 pounds of like bloat or puffiness. It very much could be related to your state and being in that high adrenaline and cortisol state. So a couple of key things here is actually have a little bit of sugar, whether that's dates or whether that's honey, if you're feeling a bit stressed out to help to reduce that cortisol, especially after a workout. If you implement something like this that I had someone share with me recently, thank you for that tip. You know who you are. And, you know, that's something that's really, really helpful. Having enough protein, keeping your blood sugars regulated, um, actually through having enough protein, eating enough during the day, not fasting too much and really balancing your work life and your home and your personal life to basically create this um, feeling of peace around you. By the way, if you're a single lady like I am right now, um, that's what men want. They want peace. They want to be around a woman who brings them peace. And I'm telling you, when you are in this state as a woman, you're going to feel better. You're going to feel more relaxed. Your face is going to show it. And by the way, if you're watching this, you might notice that my face looks extra fabulous right now because I just taught lesson one in my fall tutorials where I take you behind the scenes, show you how to apply your products, wash your face, put your eye cream on, your serum, your moisturizer, your sunscreen, maybe do some AM exfoliation to have a little bit of an extra glow. 
lymphatic drainage, releasing some of the stagnant lymph in your face, actually, um, if we're clenching our jaws too much and your masseters are really tight, I definitely also teach uh, a couple of like acupressure points too, to include in that, to just help that energy flow from the head and neck. We do need to manually stimulate this. So, and also some makeup and, and hair tutorial I taught. And so if you haven't yet registered for my fall tutorials happening now, be sure to do that over at the school of radiance.com. Now to support the men, the masculine qualities, you know, we need each other. We live in a world of duality. I'm not about to get, you know, beat around the bush here. We got men, we got women. Sure, there's some other things um, going on there too. But for the most part, we have these, well, we do, these masculine and feminine qualities. We live in a world of duality, good, bad, light, dark, up, down, north, south, left, right, right? So when it comes to the guys, being in this protector, provider, logical thinking state about 80% of the time is really good. And then when you're with your woman, maybe softening it up just a little bit, residing in that 20% feminine energy is really great because when you're at work all day and you come home, you want to be able to just experience peace so that you are not um, sort of in that hyper-masculine state all the time. You do need to allow your nervous system to relax and rest. And when the masculine and feminine come together, it's a really beautiful feeling that you can experience that's mutually beneficial, this, this interconnectedness of the two energies coming together to combine is a really beautiful feeling. And some of you listening have maybe never even experienced what this feels like. And you, you actually don't know what this feels like yet, uh, but you first have to be in, in the energy uh, embodying that 80% of the masculine or feminine to actually uh, then be able to attract and receive uh, as a woman or give as a man those qualities to your partner and those who you have exchanges with, uh, both personally and professionally. I really wanted to highlight that because that's a key component of radiance. So if you think about a woman who you have engaged with and also a man, and they just have this shine to their eyes. The way that they speak is very calming. For women, more of like that peaceful, creative flow state. For men, very like clear, direct, logical, analytical, decisive, strong energy. When we experience these things with different people that we engage with, Notice how you feel. Notice what you feel somatically in your body. When you're connecting with people who are very psychologically and energetically scrambled, not only from like a nervous system perspective, but also energetically and spiritually as well. I've been working with multiple practitioners for well over a decade who are really bridging the gap between science and spirituality. Um, there are a lot of things seen and unseen in the world that can really impact the way that we move, the way that we talk, the way that we think, the way that we engage with ourselves and others. Um, in the membership, I definitely dive more into what these components are and also how I clear myself. Because one of the key, the key principles about radiance is essentially having this priestess style approach to purification for radiance. If you've ever read the book, The Mists of Avalon, this is one of my favorite books. This is, you know, way back in the day around King Arthur's time, there were these groups of women that basically um, lived in this specific area. They had, you know, different uh, people around to protect them so that they could do what they needed to do, whether that was prey, whether that was gathering medicines or things like that. So think about that for just a moment. Um, because in modern society, women and, uh, you know, I don't want to get, I don't want to get political or like cultural in this day and age, but honestly, like the scrambling stuff is really messed up. And for women now, uh, I know I've struggled with this too. It's like, you know, you have to work enough. You have to make enough money. You got to look good enough. You, you need to, uh, you might not always feel lovable. And that is not a place to live. That is not a way to be. But the, the purification component here 
is going to make you more beautiful. And I'm going to tell you why with a little bit of science and research here. If we're toxic physically in toxins from, from toxins in our environment, so air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, eating the wrong foods that have glyphosates or GMO, and you also have things like pathogens or overgrowths of yeast, fungi, parasites, heavy metals, mold, and other things in your system, it's going to result in a little bit of scrambling of your cellular and metabolic processes. Now, why is this important? These toxins are going to mess up with your, mess your machinery up both, both physically and non-physically. And then your body actually isn't going to be absorbing the nutrients that you're consuming effectively because maybe you don't have enough of these really important cofactors like vitamins or electrolytes in your system to support these metabolic processes. Or as a part of the aging process, your NAD has gone down, which actually is really important to creating energy in the cell in the form of ATP, which is the energy currency of the body. When we reduce inflammation through the biohacking practices that I highlight here on the School of Radiance podcast, by the way, I do deep dives on this in my tutorials. A whole lesson is dedicated to reducing oxidative stress through certain things we can do with biohacking. And then also really expanded on this, not only the physical, but the non-physical things with, with our thoughts, with our emotions, with energy, uh, more in the membership. It's kind of the stuff that I'm not comfortable talking about publicly. So it's kind of two separate containers. But here on the show, I will share a resource with you. It's my biohacking page on the school of radiance.com where you'll find the air purifiers, water purifiers, EMF protective clothing, bedding, red lights, different things that I take, uh, PEMF mats to help you stay grounded inside during the day. If you're not able to get outside and ground as much as you would like, all of these things are going to reduce your oxidative stress status. So if you're struggling with having excess weight, a lot of people are going straight into, um, medical weight loss and interventions. And yes, there definitely is a lot of evidence that that's really helpful for retraining the brain from not having as much you know, sugar cravings, food cravings. So there's that. And also, you know, losing weight is, is much better for your joints so that you're not carrying excess weight, which is really hard on say your knees and your hips, for example. But I would also beg to question that if more people were willing to do the work and really saw themselves as being lovable, as being valued, valuing themselves, having better boundaries around what makes them feel good with how they eat, with the things that they're around, both you know people, places, and things, and what the home situation is like if there's mold in the home and you need to do some remediation or having air purifiers. There can be some, some concerns around implementing those things based on the people who you're around. Um, and just to get a little bit personal here, I was in a, a previous situation where I actually had my air purifiers unplugged because they were quote unquote, consuming too much energy on the hydro bell. So that was really frustrating. So if you are on your own, you're single, this is actually really easy to deploy. Getting these biohacking things, maybe one thing, a month, like an air purifier, water purifier, EMF protective clothing, blue light blocking glasses, you know, red lights in your home, starting to shift your diet to having more protein, eating in a way that's supportive of your, your DNA expression, which is epigenetics. So the biome test is great for that to give you clear, concise insights on which foods are going to be supportive of you and which foods can avoid. Love that test. It's a couple hundred bucks. You just take it at home and send it off to the lab for analysis. Very um, easy way to get some data and insights to really support you in the way that you eat. But if you're single, it's, it's, I feel like it's easier to have those self-care practices in play. And if you are in a relationship, it's really key that you do establish these boundaries. And the ideal situation is, say, for example, you're in a partnership, you're in a marriage, for you both to have the shared values of, with the masculine and the feminine dynamics, and also with the healthy living dynamics and being both on point for your nutrition. I mean, really, at the end of the day, we're going to be happier when we are in 
a, a better place with ourselves, doing things like hobbies, taking care of ourselves, making decisions out of integrity. That's really going to boost your confidence, by the way. And moving through life with balanced hormones, you're literally going to have better interactions with yourselves and others. And then in the partnership for you both and for your kids too, to have these air purifiers in your home, giving you, your partner and your family purified water, better food, doing fun things together to move your body, to exercise and focusing on, you know, really getting your, your muscle up. As we age, we can experience something called sarcopenia. And a lot of women experience this. They tend to get more frail and soft. And, and then we have other things that can happen with that, like brittle bones. So lifting heavy, getting some cardiovascular. I do a lot of sprinting at the gym now. And then also stretching are really key. And when I've observed those, you know, I would say a couple hundred people I've encountered in my life that truly are radiant. They definitely are doing those three things in their physical fitness routines to feel and look their best and exercising and moving and walking and, you know, maybe even using a rebounding trampoline to just kind of like move the energy, move the lymph, expend some of that excess energy that you have. Uh, it's going to help you look better, but it's also going to help you feel better. And you'll also get the social component with that as well. Whether you're doing your workouts at the gym and you have friends around or with your partner, you're doing it together or with your family doing fun things. And, and pickleball is a really fun thing, by the way, if you're kind of like, oh, I want to make some friends. I want to do something that's active. I love it. Uh, it's, it's a racket sport. It's a team sport. It's going to get you outside. It's going to get you moving and it's going to get you social. And I actually did a ton of pickleball when I lived in Florida for, for about six months there with uh, some retired tennis pros. And these were women who were in their, I would say, 50s to 70s. And their bodies were just incredible. They had great energy to them as well. Their mobility was fantastic. They were like whippersnappers. <laughs> so, so there's uh, that component too. The other thing that I think is going to be really conducive to helping you be more radiant is really knowing yourself. And in the membership, I do uh, deep dives on actually understanding more about yourself from an operating system perspective. What's your personality archetype? There's a couple of different personality tests that I have all the members take. And what's your attachment style? This stuff is all kind of like pre-programmed into you. We have DNA and we also have this sort of like personality blueprint. And then I would also say that we have sort of like this frequency signature blueprint. That's why when you connect with somebody, it's just like you connect with them. And uh, it feels a little bit different than, say, when you're connecting with other people. And there's all these dynamics at play, too. So it's like the more you know how you operate and can kind of put a spotlight on things you need to work on, you're going to know yourself better and you're going to maybe have a little bit of grace knowing why maybe you behaved in certain situations in the past that maybe weren't in the highest could be related to parasites, could be related to toxins, could be related to your hormones being off, could be related to your personality, could be related to your attachment style, could be related to your ability to communicate your values and boundaries effectively. You know, what do you really want in life? What's your purpose? Those who are radiant have a very sort of clear sense of who they are and what they're here to do and what their life purpose is. And they have clarity around this. I would beg to question, and obviously mine is helping others both look and feel your best. You're going to feel great. Your partner and your family are going to see you doing really great. They're going to appreciate your beauty too, by the way, from your partner's perspective. And you're sharing these insights here that I share on the show, one-on-ones, tutorials, and membership that you're going to then be able to teach to the next generation. So essentially kind of what I'm doing is part of my purpose is coming from a legacy perspective, leaving a legacy of helping others become more beautiful and radiant and just enjoy life. The clarity piece, though, if you're kind of dealing with quite a bit of stress, you're like, oh, I wish I had some clarity on this. I can think of some of the most stressful times in my life where I had to make decisions. There's a lot of energy that went into making decisions. 
took quite a bit of time to make those decisions. It was really stressful. And then <laughs> when those decisions were coming to the time of actually needing to be made, and then those adjustments and shifts were happening, it was uncomfortable. But you're never going to grow uh, without a little bit of a degree of discomfort. It's sort of like this leveling up for you. And if there's things that you're asking for in your life, it's not going to be given to you on a silver platter. The plate that you already have, some things maybe need to be shuffled around or completely removed from the plate so that what's on the silver platter has space to be received. This is also a very beautiful feminine perspective on receiving the things that are in your highest that are going to be good for you. They're, they're just going to help you be a better person. So the clarity component, I just did a call last week in our bi-monthly live calls in the membership. For me, it's it's one of my desires when I go deep and pray and meditate is I, I'm, I'm seeking clarity on situations. And it doesn't always happen right when we ask for it. Sometimes it can take some time to kind of be revealed to us, if you will. And I shared a couple of tips of you know, how to notice when those points of clarity, those glimmers are, are actually showing up that you can then learn to read and discern and lean into and keep staying on that path that's going to give you the outcome that you, um, that you desire to receive. So all of these components are deeply related to achieving deeper, longer lasting beauty. And this sort of like elusive word called radiance. You can be in your 90s and have all of the signs of sun damage and aging, pigmentation, skin redness, broken capillaries, sagging to the jawline, loss of collagen and elastin, you know, wrinkles on the arms, wrinkles on the knees, all these things. You can, you can have all the characteristic signs of aging happening, but the individuals that I've encountered that are in their 60s to 90s that are radiant, they don't have brain fog. They can speak coherently. They're a pleasure to be around and they're a pleasure to connect with. And that I would actually say overrides the way that we look. And I would also add to this sort of lens of how I observe people who are more radiant and do have this beauty, even though their beauty doesn't fit in today's modern societal standard of having perfect skin, of having a perfect jawline, of not having, you know, hooded upper lower eyelids. This stuff overrides the way that you look, but at the same time, it is going to make you look better because your eyes are going to be brighter. You're going to have this like this emission of radiance, which is the uh, essentially the 10th body in Ayurveda, the electromagnetic projection of yourself into the world based on your other operating systems. But the, the key thing is the body, mind, spirit, energy dialed in practices to start is, is key and focusing on constructive things during your process here. So you should be always, I would say pretty much always in a state of personal and self-discovery, learning about new ways to care for your physical form. Your body carries your soul. It carries you through life. So if you're thinking, ah, this, you know, skincare stuff, this makeup stuff, this rejuvenation stuff, it's, it's all feels very vain. I, I don't have the money to spend on it. I feel like I should put that money to other things. There's so many different free things that you can do from, especially the personal development side of things and the communication, the gestures, the etiquette that are actually going to serve you for the rest of your life. And just a little kind of PSA here is most of you who listen to the show are very empathic and intuitive. And there just is a little kind of like cautionary note here that not everybody is worth your energy. However, we always want to approach interactions coming from a place of love, but not giving our energy where it's not going to be appreciated. Really making sure that we're filling our cup up first with our personal care, body, mind, spirit, energy practices, because then you're going to be able to care for the needs of others that you need to care for, like your family, like your kids, your partner, and really staying dialed in, in your professional side of things, maintaining your friendships, maintaining your hobbies. 
and sometimes will engage with people who are really attractive to the highly empathetic and empathic qualities to us that actually want to take advantage of that. And that, that, that can happen. So one of the things that I do like to teach is uh, discernment around what some of these characters display when they maybe aren't good people for us to be around both personally and professionally, but we still kind of have to engage, but to not let them in, they're going to have different things with the way that they walk, with the way that they speak, with the way that they hold themselves and uh, certain things that they'll do when they first meet you. Um, it's really important that you learn these things. Um, especially as a woman to actually really protect yourself. So when you know these things, you'll have a bit of a better sense of safety because you have these tools in your toolkit to discern is whether or not this connection that's maybe personal or professional is actually going to be healthy for you. And that is in alignment with your purpose, or is it going to potentially completely derail you and bring in more chaos into your life? So uh, a little bit of a personal experience there. So that's why I'm really passionate about teaching that component. Again, that's membership stuff because uh, the psychological uh, behavioral analysis, personality archetyping side of things, I don't teach publicly because I don't really want people to know that I'm observing these things in them. I don't want the public to know that I know these things. <laughs> So that's kind of why like I'll, I'll drip it into your awareness here on the show, but I'm not going to expand on it because also not everybody is into that stuff. It's not really maybe part of their journey at this point, but radiance is something that's very special, uh, but it not, I, I think that everyone has the capacity to reside in this space and emit this, but not everybody is really interested or invested in learning the strategies in order to have these skills and then also employ them. So there's that too. Not everybody wants to do rejuvenation. Not everybody wants to use better skincare. They're happy with the toxic stuff that they get at CVS. They're happy to continue to eat fast food. It's just not important to them. So I'm not going to, you know, share this type of information with the general public because I feel like if you want to learn something, you got to have a little skin in the game and invest in something. It's the sending and receiving energy. If you are coming at it from take, 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 I'm going to get all this free stuff and try and like piecemeal it together. It's going to take you forever. And you probably are actually going to expose yourself to some bad information <laughs> along the way too. Uh, so I love you all so much. You're all doing great here on your path to becoming your most beautiful high vibe radiant version, but the radiance piece is definitely conducive to achieving longer lasting and deep beauty and building confidence. And when we're confident, we're going to be better able to build our community, which is actually a deep survival need to build our community with friends and family and colleagues around us to support one another as well. So go in the world, be good people, make good choices, act out of integrity, uh, but, but add that level of discernment. And also this is your here kind of like prod or nudge to take better care of your body with your exercise, with your nutrition, with what you're exposing yourself to energetically with people and also, you know, shows and in music and things like that too. So purification is at, I would say the base and foundation of deep, long lasting beauty and radiance. So be high vibe, be as pure as possible. And I'll see you again right here on the school of radiance podcast.